Welcome to our Omid Yom Yishir. We are now doing Psochim. Psochim Kufches Amudalef. We are now in the sugya of Haseva on leaning to your side, leaning on Lela Seder when you drink the Dalit Koises, when you eat the Matzah. Yet yeah, we're going to discuss this sugya now. This year's Lela Nishma Sovi Merim and Achim and Akiva. Rus Bas Shalom Sobas Moshe Chania Chana Enya Reisha Bas Elchanan Itzchok Rafuas Aviva Bas Devoiro. And in the Chayvas Gula Rochem. Okay, let's go. So, Parkedan, we are now in the line. Yeah, we're going to learn now about different forms of Haseva, which ones are good, which ones are not. What's called Haseva? What kind of position is considered as Haseva, which one is not, and other details to do with Haseva. So, stay with us now. Welcome to everybody here, Navas Shalom. Welcome to. Torah, anytime viewers and YouTubers. So, Parkedan Losh Mehaseva. Parkedan, a person who does not lean on his side, but rather he leans in a way that's Parkedan. What's Parkedan is a big debate in the Rishonim. Parkedan probably means facing up. Lying on your back, facing up, is called Parkedan. That's what Toysus proves it from a Gemara in uh, Bove Basra. The Gemara of Basra, Daf Ein Dalet Amud Aleph. <clears throat> the Gemara over there says that um, there was um, um, there was an Arab traveler who took around Rabbi Barachana. Rabbi Barachana had very interesting, fantastic stories. There was an Arab traveler who took him to the desert and he showed him the Mesa Midbar, the people who died in the Midbar. And he saw them lying down on their face, on their backs, and that's called Parkadon. And they were so big that they were lying with their with their knees like that. You know, like a person lies on his back, you know, the knees up like that. You know, like you... Yeah, so him and his camel and, and the sword managed to ride below their knees. Yeah, in other words, they were so big, yeah? Like he can drive an entire tree through a sequoia, an entire car through a sequoia tree. Yeah, the whole... So that's it. The kids are... Parkadan probably means to lie on your back. However, the Ran says another Rishonim say Parkadan may mean also lying on your on your stomach, face down. So it's either face up or face down. Neither of them is good, is called a seva, because it's not a seva. Reason number one, loy shmei haseva. That's what the Gemara says. A seva means to lie like a king, to lean like a king, to incline like a king, like a Ben Choyrin, Lahavdi, like the Roman emperors used to do. And therefore, when you lie, you know, face up, face down, yeah, first of all, First of all, you're not allowed to lie like that when you go to sleep. You should know that for reasons of tzenius, men are not allowed to sleep like that. And that's besides the point. But to lie like that when you're awake may be okay. It's a machlok, it's a mishnabur and chadonish. But lemaisa, to lean like that. In Leila Seder, you're not called leaning. You may feel like a king when you know you go like that, you know, and you drink and you eat and you feel like you're in the beach or something. But lemaisa, that's not right because it's not called a seva. That's not the proper derech for um, noble people to eat their meal. Besides the fact that there's another issue coming up soon. Now comes another position to be mentioned. A seva siyamin lo shema seva. A seva siyamin, if a person lies on his right, it's not called a seva. Why not? If I lean on my right, why is that called a seva? That's not a bummy way to lean. Instead of the left, I lean on my right. What's wrong? Says Rashi, assuming you're a righty, which most people are, I think 75% of the population use the right hand. So then if you lean like that and you have to use the right hand, it's very uncomfortable. So that's not called a seva. A seva is supposed to be comfortable. Not sure it really is, logically. For us, we're not so used to it. But Lemaisa, a seva is supposed to be convenient and comfortable. So if you lie on your right hand side and you eat with your right hand, that's not called a seva. So for that reason, you could argue and say, that a lefty should like like that, right? Because why he's using his left hand. However, however, let's continue. Veloy oid. Not only there is an issue of nana seva of not being comfortable. That's a famous line. If a person eats on his uh, on his right hand side, there's an issue with the kone and veshet. In other words, the 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 windpipe and the food pipe may get confused. Rashi has all explanation. Um, yeah, and therefore maybe the wrong one's going to open first. You may get your food like that into your windpipe and not your food pipe, the esophagus, whatever it's called. Yeah, esophagus. 
Y- esophagus, esophagus. Thank you. Very nice. It's called Kaneh and Veshet, by the way, as you can see here. Yeah, Kaneh is the windpipe and Veshet is the food pipe. And if they get confused, it's a Sakona. You may come to eat, you know, with uh, the wrong place. Yeah, in other words, the food will go down the windpipe and you don't want that. And that applies to righties as well as to lefties. To lefties, not leftists. That's another thing, yeah? Righties or lefties, they both apl- applies to both and because of the Sakona. Sam Rishonim said that Parkadon is also Sakona. To lie like that and drink and eat when you completely lie down, face up or face down, is also dangerous. And therefore, what? Yeah, food doesn't go down properly if you completely lie down like that. And therefore, don't try it at home. So that's number one. We ruled out lying in all kinds of fun positions. The only correct way is to lie down, to basically incline yeah, to your left like this. You have a pillow over here between you and the and what and the chair in our case, and you drink like that. Now, Isha Tzalbaila, the next piece is going to be about who is supposed to lean and who's not supposed to lean. Some people are not meant, Bukhlal, to do Haseva and Leila Seder. It doesn't apply to them. I want to remind you, what did we say? That even a poor person may lie in Leila Seder, supposed to do a Seva in Leila Seder, even though he's poor. What's the Chiddush? Even though he may not have the money yeah, to, to actually buy the bed or the cushion, whatever is needed, we have to provide it to uh, for him. And also, one would say that this is like a joke. You know, the Oni never never eats like a Ben Choyrin. So maybe in Leila Seder neither. Kamash Malani is supposed to eat the Seva in Leila Seder. Now let's talk about other people. Isha et Salbaila, a woman in, in front of her husband. A husband and wife are together for Leila Seder. That's so nice. A woman in front of her husband, lo ba'ya seva. She does not need to actually incline. She's taught her from, from uh, reclining yeah, to her side. Why is that? We're going to see soon. And then it says, v'em isha chashuva hitzricha seva. If she's an important woman, then she needs to do a seva. What's going on over here? A woman by her husband, yeah, the Rishonim say a woman by her husband has two issues. First of all, it doesn't say any woman. A woman in front of her husband. A seva means that I'm relaxed. A seva is tantamount, is gematria, somehow relaxation. And a woman in front of her husband has both a lachik and technical reason that she's not relaxed. Why? Because, let's start for the technical reason, a woman is the one who's supposed to be in charge of the household, and therefore she actually has the chiyuv, the obligation, to take off the table, serve the table, so she's not relaxed, she's be'etzem, a person who keeps serving. Moreover, the woman has a halachic obligation, she's meshubad lebaila, she's subjugated to her husband, she's meshubad, she's committed halachically to her husband to serve him. Yeah, man has many obligations towards his wife, the wife has the chiv to serve him the meal, to make his bed. You know, the maker didn't woman supposed to wash her husband's the face, hands and feet. Don't try it at home, yeah. But maker din, you know, that's that's yeah, the good old days, yeah, before feminism. So Lemaisa, the the the, the woman has the chiv to take care and tend to her husband. And as such, she's not in a position, excuse the pun, of a seva. So it's either something intrinsic that she is what she is. Meshubad, and also it says Amos Bala Alea. She has the fear of her husband upon her. That's the Chasmashal means fear of abuse, but she has like an awe of her husband. That's the relationship supposed to be that she looks up to her husband like a Talmud to a Rebbe. Yeah, like he's the he's the rov of the house. He's the important person of the house. He's the head of the family. Secondly, she has a technical obligation to serve the food. If so, so she's not in a relaxed atmosphere. She is like you know on call. Now, what's Isha Chashuva? What's an important woman that does need to do a seva? There are three explanations. I saw it in the Mephoshim and the Rambam, the the Mishnah, the, the Ben Manoch, Mishnah Melech. Different Mephoshim say like that. If we say that the idea is that the woman, the mere fact that she's married, yeah, the f- mere fact that she's married means he's above me, and I have this like you know situation of fear of my of awe from my husband, yeah. Then an isha chashuva that does need to incline to excuse me recline I should really say yeah that's supposed to do a seva is what is a woman who is divorced or never got married single single and free or a widow so she's a chashuva because she doesn't have any other men you know she doesn't have a man that is an authority over her 
So she has to do a seva, actually. Yeah, every non-married girl, because we're going to see that a son and a father also have their own relationship, yeah? But a non-married girl should have to do a seva. Second woman, now that's, this is interesting. This is very interesting. And here we get more like in today's world. The Chochmas Manach, I think he says, Isha Chashuva is a terrorist. A woman is a Choshev, a woman. She's a big Rebetzin. She comes from Choshev, a family. She can teach her husband a Shikol Taira. She's a Choshev, a woman. She's one of these, you know, speakers. Yeah, Rebetzin, so and so. So she she has to recline because she doesn't feel that fear from her husband. She feels like an equal footing with him. Now, that is if you say because she has a situation of awe. Oh, what about the technicality? According to the opinion that says, listen, a woman may not be less than men, but she's the one that has to serve the table. According to that, we say, let's say there's a woman who's a very regular woman. She definitely has awe from her husband. She feels way below him. But if she has many mishorsim, she has other people. She has cleaning help. She has serving help. I was once in a certain country and, uh, you know, at the Shabbos table, there were mishorsim serving, you know. I came back home, it's a chutzlar, it's I came back home, my wife said, ooh, that's nice, you know, yeah, they had servants who kept serving at the meal, yeah, so if a woman has that situation, that uh, whatever set up, that set up, so she has to do a seva, because if the idea is just the mere fact that she's technically busy, she may not be such a chosh of a woman, and she's married, and she's very much, and all from the husband's, you know, uh, best king in his life, but the maisa, if she has cleaning and serving help, she has to do a seva. Practically speaking, it's not halacha shi, and I want to be very careful here to define that. However, however, it does say that today's women, the Ramos says, don't have to do a seva. First of all, it says two things. <laughs> it says in the Ramos, noshim shelanu are all chashuvos. All our women are called chashuva women. Why? So I saw that in today's world, what's today? Rabbeinu Gershom was the one who actually cared about women's rights, and I'm not joking for a change about it, yeah? Rabbeinu Gershom, the one who said that a man is not allowed to marry more than one woman, that bigamy is illegal in Yiddishkeit, and why did he do that? Because he saw that men abuse their wives, and they say, you know, I'll just marry another woman. What was his other, uh, uh, what was his other takono? What else did he establish? That a woman cannot be divorced against her will. And if so, a woman cannot be divorced against her will. She has more rights. He can't just, you know, divorce me even with Suba. And therefore, today's women are all Choshuv. That's why all of today's women are Choshuv. So let them do a Seva. Why is it that the common custom, as far as I know, as far as I can, I have seven girls, you know? So what, it, the Minag is not to, to, to do a Seva by women. The answer is, and this is something very important to know, there is an opinion of the Rav Yo. Rav Yo is one of the Rishonim. Rav Yos says that today you don't have to do a seva whatsoever. Mm. Done with a seva. Why? Nobody has to do a seva according to the Rav Yo. Leave women alone. Men, women, children, or any other options we have today, nobody has to do a seva whatsoever. Why? Because today we don't do a seva throughout the year. It doesn't show a, a, a malchus anymore. I don't know. I haven't been to the houses of the richest people in the world. I've actually I've been to actually houses of very rich people. Yeah. I haven't seen the Dua Seva, right? Okay. Yeah. In other words, because it's not normal, it mainly doesn't demonstrate Cherus. So the Rav Yos says nobody has to do a Seva. Now, we don't rely on his opinion, but women may. Women rely on the opinion of the Rav Yos because women is such an issue with the Seva. It's a women's issue. We may love the Seva with the women's issue. We say, you know what? Let them rely on the Rav Yos and not do a seva. That's why women don't do a seva, right? In other words, a woman doesn't have to do a seva if she's a regular woman in front of her husband, okay? Now, if she's choshuv, and let's assume they're all choshuv, she does. At the end of the day, women were no heg to rely on the Rav Yah, which anyhow says you don't have to do a seva, and that's why women today don't do a seva. If she wants to, she can. As far as I know, it's not some crazy modern feminist thing. If a woman wants to do a seva... I tell my wife, my daughter, you want to do a seva, be vakasha, why not? As long as you keep your dresses clean, great fun. But Lamai said they don't, okay? But that's the, yeah, it's not halacha shir. I'm giving you general guidelines, local orthodox, v'chule, v'chule. And uh, yes, question time. Yuhu. He was first. Okay. Ben etzel oviv. What about a son by the father? Ben etzel oviv. Yeah, the son 
in, by his father's table. <laughs> That's absolutely common. Children should be at their parents' uh, seder table. Boya seva, he requires a seva. That's a chiddush. One would argue and say, a son by the father, yira skovoid. What about you know moira yira moira of avaim? So maybe he doesn't have to do a seva because he's at all. And the answer is, you're right. However, his chiv of yira is the chiv d'oraisa, but in a way, he's less meshubed to the father than the mother is to the father. What does that mean? The mother is not mechuv midoraisa and yira is covered of the husband. But practically speaking, that's her chiyuv. In a practical way, a woman's chiyuv towards her husband is to, you know, make sure that he's satisfied and, you know, give him what he needs, v'chulei. A, a, a son has that chiyuv also, that's true, but by a son, the assumption is that the father is moichel on his kovoid. That's shot. In other words, the Rishonim say that a son by a father, yeah, even if the father is his rov, the father taught him Torah. That's quite common by some people. Moiri v'rabi, ovi moiri. So then the father, mistome, is moichel the kovoid towards his son. To the wife, he's not moichel, because she has to serve him. He needs still the, 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 the service from her. Right, you're right what you said before, Shlomo, that a woman, while she's eating the matzah, she's not serving. But while she's eating the matzah, she's thinking, I have to serve the chicken soup and the this and that and that. In other words, she's still not in the state of relaxation, according to this opinion. Now, Iboyilahu comes a question now about a third person. Tell me that Salraboy my. Oh, what's Allah? Tell me that the Rav. A person wants to have Leila say there by his Rav. Oh, how inspiring, how nice. Leila Seder by the Rav. In other words, that's the Rav who taught him Torah. That's his source of inspiration, of knowledge. Let's emulate his ways. Let's bask in his light. And the question is, do he, does he, or doesn't he have to do a seva, a Talmud by the Rebbe? Oh, my, what's aloha? That is less simple. Toshma, yeah, let's see what it says here in the Memra. Omar Abaye, says Abaye, Kiavin and Bey Mar, when we first learned Torah by Rabba, Rabba was a Rosh Hashiva, at the beginning, he was Rosh Hashiva of Abai and Rove. When we used to be by Mar, when we had Leila Seder by our first Rebbe, which was Ra Ba, Zagin and Abir Kedahadodi, we used to lean one on the, on, the, on the knees of the other. In other words, leaning doesn't have to be on a pillow. You can lean on your friend. In other words, we would lean one. They didn't have pillows, didn't have money, didn't have space, didn't have whatever, the facilities. So Lemaisa, we leaned one, you know, boom, on the other. And this way, Lemaisa, we did a seva, although he was a rov, we did a seva. Okay. Ki has seen al of Yosef. At some point after Rabba's times, Rav Yosef became the Rosh Hashiva after Rabba. So now when Rav Yosef, yeah, sat on the throne of the Rabbanus and he was my Rav, Omar Lan, he told us, you don't have to do a seva. Don't recline. Why? Because it says the fear in Mishnah and Ovois, we all know the Mishnah and Ovois, the Moira, the fear, the awe you should have from your Rav is like the awe you should have from a Kaddish Baruch Hu. And that's why you don't lean. You shouldn't lean because really the Moira you should have towards me is greater than the Moira, or at least as much as you have from Hashem. And therefore you don't have to lean because you're in a state of, you don't have to serve anybody, you're in a state of awe, of hero, and therefore you don't have to lean. <clears throat> now the question obviously is, didn't Rabbi know the Mishnah Novos? <laughs> Rabbi said that they can lean, right? And Rabbi Yosef says, no, don't lean. Here is the Rav. And Rabbi, why did Rabbi say it's okay for them to lean? Right? Rabbi knew the Mishnah Novos, I think so, yeah? <laughs> right? So what's going on really over here? The answer is, like I told you, Mechila. Rabbi was Moichel. Rabbi says, you know, in order for you to be Mechaim the Mitzvah, I give in, I give up, I do mechila, I moichel the fact that you have to respect me. And there, a rav can be moichel is covered. Yes, up to a point, not, not if they're mevazahim, but the mechila of the extra covered of standing up and doing this and that and the other, all the extra covered you give a rav, a rav can be moichel. You don't have to stand when I come in. Also, father to his children. Oh. So, by the father, the assumption is that the father was moichel on the covered. On his covered in era, and the father wants his children to behave in a natural way. So the father says, Okay, we assume he wants us to lean, you know, that we become the mitzvah of leaning also, which may be a mitzvah by itself, like we said. The Rav is a question. Rabbah was automatically Moichel. Okay, they can lean. He didn't say a word. 
Rav Yosef said, no, I think the mitzvah of Yira of the Rav overrides, yeah, and overcomes, and is more important than what? Than the mitzvah of leaning. It's two values, one against the other. And the halacha is like Rav Yosef. In other words, unless known otherwise, let's summarize. Both, you have to have Yira's kovoid and sit like, you know, Yira in front of your father and in front of your Rebbe. However, by the father, the assumption, the chazoko, the default situation by father is Michael. The father lives with his children and us. And actually, my own father told me that it says in Halacha, when you live, a father and children live together at home, the father shouldn't be too strict with the children. You know, stand up for me, get up for me, do this and that, because you want to be in more relaxed atmosphere with the kids. The Shank and the Rebbe, the assumption is the other way around. The assumption is, unless known otherwise, you go to your Rebbe the first time for Leila Seder, the assumption is he's not Moichel, and you have to treat him covered and therefore not lean, but sit be'ima u'be'ira. By the way, when you read the Haggadah, you don't lean either. Why? Because when you read the Haggadah, you have to be be'ima. You have to be in the state of, you know, fear and awe. Oh, this is the Haggadah. It's something needs concentration. I'm not relaxed when I read the Haggadah. Same thing when in front of your Rebbe, la'alocho, you don't lean unless he asks for a shus. He may ask you for a shoot. Rebbe, may I lean in front of you? If he says yes, then go ahead. Otherwise, no. Question time. Boom. Okay. Let's continue. May CV. Now, may CV. Now comes a question from a brisa. Imhakol odo mesev. A person be mesev with anybody. Whoever is at the table, you always have to do a sovo. The filu talmi detzel raboi. Even a Talmud, but the Rav has to do a Seva. How can you say that? How can you say that unanimously like that, simply that a Talmud has to lean with the Rav? It's not true. The assumption is what? That the Rav is not Moichel the Kovid. He's not supposed to lean. Can't be relaxed and, you know, behave like a Melech in front of your Rebbe. And that overrides us the Chiyuv Seva. Answers the Gemara, Kitani Ahi Beshulia Denagri. That talks about your, to put it in modern language, your Rebbe for math for science, for English, geography, or French, or in the times of the Gemara, Shuli Denagri is, let's say a person is the apprentice of the Nagar, the apprentice of the carpenter, the apprentice of whoever, he's a person whom you respect, he's an older person, he's your Rebbe who teaches you carpentry, teaches you interior designing, teaches you, I don't know, math, you know, my math teacher, I have a lot of uh, reverence to them, yeah? <laughs> Did a great job, so on. And if you sit in front of them, you're allowed to relax. You're allowed to lean and recline because there is no COVID at Torah. Let me ask you a question. What's the Havamina? Yeah, it's just Limude Chol. Don't give me now lectures about Limude Chol. At the end of the day, why should I think I'm not supposed to lean, which is such a Chosh of a Mitzvah or extra Mitzvah? Why would I think that a person is supposed to, yeah, not lean or not supposed to lean in front of someone who taught him I don't know, uh, old French or uh, Chinese history. It's not halachic. You remember what I told you at the very beginning of the sugya? I told you to remember why is it that a poor person doesn't lean or does lean. I would have thought he doesn't. Why is that? But the poor person? Because he is not in a matzav of leaning. He's really poor. He doesn't really feel like a free person. In other words, for him to lean looks like a joke. That's what I would have said. Same thing we could say over here. A person is in front of the one other person whom he gives a lot of respect to. This is a great law professor from Harvard. Okay, wow. So he, that new lawyer, has a lot of admiration to that amazing law professor, professor of law. Yeah, wow, he knows so much about law. So in my cell, one could claim, I really feel such awe and respect and, re and, and, you know, and reverence towards him there may be deference. Maybe I don't have to lean. Yeah, because it's not natural. I don't feel naturally relaxed in front of him. Such an imposing person. Kamash Malan, we don't say that. We don't go by that. We only go by halachic or by not by secular law. And not secular law. But that's the Kiddush of the Bryce. Now, Ibailu, comes the question now. Shamish Mai, let's say you have a Jewish person at the table. And that used to be very common. I believe it happens nowadays too in some families. There's a man or women or woman, and they are what? They are the servants. They're Jewish. They keep mitzvahs as they should. And they are paid people, a shamish. 
They're supposed to serve at the table. My question, I would say those people are definitely not relaxed because all the time they're rushing back and forth and they are in charge of the table more than the woman. And therefore, if they're in charge of the serving, maybe they don't have to, incl- to, uh, to recline. So Shema, let's hear. Domo B'Shub and Levi, Hashem HaShochel Kazais Matzah Shumesev Yotzo. As Shamash will eat a kazais matzah while while mesev while leaning yotzo, then he's yotze. Okay, mesev in lo mesev loy. If you ate the matzah without the seva, you're not yotze. Now, by the way, what I told you before that there's a question about eating the matzah again with or without a bracha. Nowadays, there is mokum to rely on the rav yo. Remember the rav yo who said we don't have to lean bechlal. Sometimes when you forgot to lean, let's say, while drinking a cup, you have a shiloh, maybe it's going to look like you're drinking an extra cup, you rely on the ravio. But me'ikar din, before the ravio came to the world, if you ate without a seva, you have to repeat again. But one thing we see from here, the shamish, the servant, has to eat with a seva. Shma mina boya seva, shma mino. We see that a shamish needs to be masev, and that's a maskono, excuse me. I want to ask a question, now it's my turn to ask the question. A shamish is relaxed? We're talking here about the Talmud by the Rov, and we're talking about a woman by the husband. Obviously, don't treat your wife like a slave, chas b'shalom. And so they don't have to lean, and the shamish has to lean. Why is that? Say the Rishonim, please forgive me, I remember who says what. It says, When you employ a person, it's very important that that person knows and you know that he's not your slave. There's no such thing as Jewish slave. There's Jewish, uh, in English, you call it a different name, whatever, worker, uh, servant. Therefore, that person is not completely subjugated to you. Yeah, yeah Jewish people are only a vodim of Hashem, not a vodim of the boss. You're not a slave of your boss. And therefore, although technically he's the one who has to serve, he is, and he's supposed to feel relaxed at the Seder, not just outwardly, internally relaxed. Today, I'm also a boss. I will take off the table later, and I will do this and that. But Lamaisa, I am now a free person because I'm not a, I'm a, sir, I'm not a slave of my master. And therefore, he relaxes and he leans. Okay? That's about the Shamish. Um, a quick one. Yeah, okay. Omo Belmo Bishoban Levi. Now, again, about women. Noshim chayoves ba'abakosos alolu. Women have to drink the four cups. Let's stop right here. Why would have I thought that they don't have to drink the four cups? If not for the Gemara now telling me this. Why would have I assumed the women don't have to drink the four cups? Huh? Because it's not sano to drink? Because the mitzvah says, Shazon Goma, Shlomo, as always. Yeah, usually what you call in English time-related mitzvahs, Mitzvah says she has man gomer. Women don't have to do. You told me wives lean. I hope your wives don't put on tefillin also. Yeah, I don't know what else. Where 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 are we going here? Yeah, tzitzis. Why don't women put tzitzis in tefillin? Ah, why not? The minister Why not? What's wrong? As man grama, you don't put your tefillin all day long. All day long you could, but not at night, right? Tzitzis, tefillin, krishma. Women are less mechuyev than men, way less. So all the mitzvahs that are time related, women don't have to fulfill. If so, why do they have to drink the dalit koises? Dalit says, last time I checked, you know, you only drink it on Passover night, at the Seder night, not all year round. So why would the women have to drink it? Why are they mechuyev? Says the Gemara, we're turning the page, Shaten hoyoboy sanes. They too were in the miracle. Now, what does it mean they were in the miracle? They too were in the miracle? I just translated this very literally. There's a big, 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 big machlok between Lashbam and Toisves. Excuse me. Lashbam Rashi versus Toisves. So now, there are two ways to explain it. Explanation number one is that Afen Oyu Boisanes means they were the ones you can see in the Rashi and Rashbam here on the side. Yeah. In other words, women, the women, let's read the Rashi inside. Rashi on top. Because of the righteous women of that generation, that's why they were Nigal. Why? The women are the ones, the husbands came back from work very, very tired and just wanted to hit the sack. You know, hit the sack, hit the sack. And the women started basically encouraging them to procreate, to do pruurvu. And that was the women, the, because of the women, that's why we had children in continuation. 
that was the schus of the women. And because the women were instrumental and important and they played a key role in the Geula, that's why they had to drink the Dalit Koises. Continues Rashi, the Chen Gabi Mikra Megillah. Why do women have to run to Megillah? There's always, you know, women hearing the Megillah. They're like, you know, one Megillah for men and like 10 different readings for women, you know, in his house and this. Why do women have to listen to Megillah? It's only once a year, twice a year. Also the same thing, Namirin Anachi, the Mishum Dali de Esther Nigalu. A woman was the key person in the Geula. Esther, she was a woman last time I checked. And the Chen Gabi Ner Chanukah. Why do women have to light Ner Chanukah? They do. They don't light. Practically, maybe the husband lights, yeah? But she has Yoitsu the husband, Yishtu Kigufe. Why do women have to have Hanukkah candles? Why is that? Because of Yehudis. Yehudis was the one who tricked all the fairness, yeah? And because of him, yeah, they won the war, right? She gave him milk, the and then this, they chopped off his head, the Now, because women are instrumental in those three, Yomim Toivim, Hanukkah, Purim, and Pesach, that's why they had to fulfill the mitzvahs of those days. This is who, this is Rashi. Toysis argues, and Toysis says the lotion is af Sarnes means they too were in the miracle. Mashma, we're not saying here that they were instrumental and central. We're saying they too were saved. Since Toysis, simply, women were also saved by the miracle. Yeah, the reason why women have to celebrate and the same mitzvahs is because women too were saved by the miracle, by Hanukkah, Purim, and by Pesach, they were in danger as much as we were, if not more. In Hanukkah, there were big issues of Tznias. They wanted to rape the girls, b'chule, b'chule, and therefore, they were saved, and they also thank Hashem as much as men do. I want you to realize those three mitzvahs are also mitzvahs de Abonon, mitzvahs de Abonon, because in the Oraisa, we don't say that. Tosis points out that in Sukkot, women don't have to sit in the Sukkah, practical today, 2023, Women, may, women don't have to sit in the sukkah. In Sephardi, women don't make Lesh of the sukkah. That much, yesh gvul, yeah? And therefore, why? The women were saved from its rhyme, and Hashem set them too at the sukkahs. Hashem made them those glorious clouds of glory for the women too. Says Tosis, that's Doraisa. In the Doraisa, the Torah said, women don't have to fulfill mitzvah. When Rabbanon invented their own new mitzvah, established a mitzvah such as Hanukkah, Purim, and Dalit Koisis, which is the Rabbonon, those mitzvahs, Rabbonon said, once we establish the mitzvah, we'll go egalitarian, and we'll do it for both men and women, because they were both saved from the, by the nays equally. That's why it applies to both. Now, having said that, don't get confused. Why do women have to eat matzah? Matzah is the oraisa. Why do women have to eat matzah? It's also Zman Gromo. The answer is because there's a hekesh, as you say in our scrollies juxtaposition, between not eating chometz and yes, eating matzah. The Torah says don't eat chometz, but rather eat matzah. Therefore, everybody and anybody that's not supposed to eat chometz, that's women. Who goes crazy before Pesach about every little crumb? Women. Women don't eat chometz as much as men don't eat chometz. And therefore, women too are mechuyav in yes, eating matzah as much as men. That's a different reason. But those three drabonons, Chanukah and Megillah, Dalit Koises, our mitzvahs, the Rabbanon, the women have to do as much as men because they were saved from the next or because they were instrumental. So Rabbanon invented the new halacha here, established an halacha, including the women. Okay? Now, having said that, you also have to know there's another common denominator between Hanukkah, Megillah, and Dalit Koises. And the common denominator yeah. is... The answer is both, all three, which are Hanukkah candles is Pil Sumanes. We all know that. Mikra Megillah is pure Sumanes. That's why, preferably, you have to listen to the Megillah with a big crowd, Beroiv Am, with a lot of people. Preferably, not Makim. You have a small minute of 10 people, and every minute of 100 people, you go to the 100. And Dalit Koisis is also called pure Sumanes, absolutely. And that's why these, yes, 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 even if you're on your own, you may farce me to yourself. It's a show. You demonstrate something by drinking like a king. You act a show, like little children sometimes make a show to the parents, and the only crowd are two people. So <laughs> some show are very private, uh, yeah, private edition. So too, the Hanukkah candles and Mikra Megill and Dalit Kursis are all pure Somanes. And that's why it says even the poorest person should sell himself and beg and do anything to be kind those mitzvahs. Because those mitzvahs, although they're abundant, they keep the Jewish nation going. Because these mitzvahs are mefarsim to the next generation, to ourselves, 
That's the show we have three times a year to remember who we are. And it's very, very important to keep those mitzvahs, all these three. That's, I'm not saying this. This is the before Sharam, but also that's why the Oni has to beg for anything for that because it's Pir Sumanes. Chanukah, Megillah, and the Dalit Koises. They are Pir Sumanes, and women have to do it. And also the poorest person always have to make sure that he has enough, okay? In order to become those mitzvahs. Let's go. Omar Biuda Omar Shmuel. Oh, now we're learning more details about the Dalit Koises. Says Rabbi Yudah Omar Shmuel. Before we continue, before we continue, we're about to start a newish sugya, not an old new sugya, but we're going to delve deeper into the, to, to, to now dive into the cup of wine. Go deeper into the essence of Dalit Koises, not so much a seva. Now, I want to ask you a question. Is there a mitzvah, at least an Indian choshu, to drink wine on Yom Tev? Yes. And Simcha el it says, we'll see it actually in the next page, Simcha is with wine. Some people don't like wine. The brisker of once, somebody told him, you know, I hate wine. So how can I drink wine in, uh, during Yom Tev? Because I'm not enjoying it. So the brisker of said, he's a ligner, he's a liar. Because <laughs> brisk, they say, whatever the Torah says is the reality. Yeah, yeah, if the Torah says you enjoy wine, must be you do enjoy wine in Yom Tov. Like something is wrong with you. Maybe a different type of wine, you know, try, I don't know, Chardonnay, not Riesling, whatever, whichever one. But La Maisa, wine is the Simcha of Yom Tov. Oh. So as we said yesterday, as I answered Tzvi yesterday, we have actually sometimes mitzvahs that are juxtaposed, and you said today, some things we do in Leila Seder, which is a combination of an all-year-round mitzvah, general mitzvah, such as washing my hands, kiddush, mechule, and some mitzvahs are exclusive to Leila Seder. The Dalit Koises are actually a combination of two things. There are Dalit Koises that represent the Cherus, represent, of course, the four types of Geula, like we all know, the beginning of Parshas Vaera, and then we have what? Drinking wine. Drinking wine as of itself, even not the Dalit Koises, is a mitzvah of Simchas Chag, Besamachta Bechagecha. What's Besamachta Bechagecha? To go to the amusement park with your kids? Not a Simcha for the parents, you know, to schlep all the way. <laughs> That's not Simchas Yom to mean. So drink wine. That's what it means, and you're combining it with the Dalit Koises. Having that in mind, now, another thing we have to know, as we all know, you tell me before we start the sugya. According to what we learned yesterday, each one of the Dalit Koises is connected one of the four mothers. It's coming to welcome us to a new part of the Seder, another section in the Seder. You tell me what's your opinion. Somebody wants to say, you know, ugh, ugh, the Dalit Koises, you know, I want to get over and done with it. One, two, three, four, goodbye. He drinks all Dalit Koises together and then he goes into the Seder. Ah, what do you say? Good? No? Don't? Oh, let's see what the Gemara has to say. I don't think it's a good idea either. You're right. Let's see how the Gemara talks about it. What the Gemara has to say. Says the Gemara. Omer Abiyuda Omer Shmuel. There are a few details of the Dalit Koises. Albo Koises Halolu. Those four Koises. Those four cups. Sorich Sheben Kedei Mezigas Kois Yofo. The amount. How much should you drink? How much should you have there? Kedei enough to be mozeg. Enough to dilute into to be diluted into a kois yofo, which means a kois yofo is what we call a rabis, 86, the cooler sheet is 86 milliliters, the more machmir is 100 and, no, 50 something, what, 150, 86 is the smaller one, and double of that is how much, 86 times 2 is 100 and what? Please, please, please. What? 172, thank you, such a genius. 172 uh, milliliters is the bigger one, okay? So now, you have, that's called what we call a revis, a revis, <laughs> yeah? Now, if you have a wine, what they used to call yain chai, which literally means raw wine, <coughs> the wines they used to have in the times of the Gemara was very, very, very strong and concentrated in the normal, nice, halachic and connoisseur way of drinking that wine was by diluting it three times over. Every portion of strong yang chai would have to have three portions of water. Be diluted by three X amount of, yeah? Now, if your total, the total outcome at the end is what we call the rabis, by the way, the rabis of the chazunish is more or less like a chad pami cup, like a disposable cup. That's a chazunish, good one for Leila Seder. Don't use this one. You have to have one which is a uh, which is made out of metal or at least glass, yeah? And that, if you have a yain chai, that's one quarter 
of this total, then you're okay. I explained to you the maskono. The Gemara is a havim and it means something else, but that's what the real halacha is, and we'll get back to the maskono, havim and maskono. Next thing, shton chai yotzo. Let's say the person drank the yain chai. He drank wine which is way too strong and not enjoyable for most people. He drank the entire thing yain chai. Can you imagine? Like the Israelis, it's very common to have what we call petel, you know, like concentrated fruit juice, right? You, you put a bit in the cup. You remember that? In the olden times in Israel, it's very common. And then you add water. So imagine yourself, you drink a concentrated juice, a whole cup. What? Wow. Uh, it's way too sweet and way too strong. But if you drink Dalit Koises of just that, Yotzo, but you have the Yotzo, you Yotzo, you make the mitzvah of Dalit Koises, even though it's not nice wine. It's way, it's not too, it's way too strong. According to Shmuel, soon we're going to see a debate. One second, please, parents. So you're going to see that according to Shmuel, if you drink super strong wine, not normally drank by normal human beings, but you have it, you have it, and that's a chiddush. Quick, quick, quick. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, if you survive to tell the tale, to tell the tale of Mitzrayim and yourself. Wow, listen to this. It sounds like Shmuel is telling us that if you drank all four cups, one go, one, two, three, four, ready to go for the Seder, your yoitze, unbelievable, right? But that's what Shmuel seems to be saying. If you drank all four cups, one after the other, your yoitze. By the way, we're going to talk more about that later. Now, I'm just giving you the general introduction now, Shmuel's opinion. Let's say you did not have the entire cup for yourself. You shared it with your family. You have one cup, and you shared that one cup of, let's say, Kiddush between you and the entire family, or your yaitse. And of course, the question is, you have to have a shear. You have to have an amount. So all these things are very open to questions and arguments. Now, that's it. Oh. Now, yotzo, yotzo. now, now the Gemara is going to elaborate on that. Up until now, there was Shmuel's opinion. Shmuel is being very lenient. Even if you drank it raw, you drank it with other people, you drank it all not in the right order, it's all fine. According to Shmuel, everything's super lenient. However, we're now going to revisit each and every detail here that we spoke about. And we're going to actually partially argue, and we're going to uh, make an akimta to uh, qualify. Shton chayotzo. When is it true that if you drink the wine chay yotzo, you drank raw wine, meaning super strong wine, too concentrated? How come you yotze? Omarove. That's not always true. Yede yain yotzo, yede cherus lo yotzo, which means. You drank the wine, but you're not really drinking it like a ben cherus. You're not drinking it like a ben choirin, which means you're mekayim the dalad koises, but not ben mehuder. You're not mekayim it with mitzvah shleima. That's what Rashi says. You drank the dalad koises. Is it wine? It's wine. Did I drink four? Four. Did I lean everything right? But because the wine is like too strong and not enjoyable, you're not drinking it as a ben choirin. It, that's why they say the, the wine of Leila Seder, and I remember from somewhere, don't remember where, you have to like the wine. If you don't like wine, take grape juice, yeah? Even Shekhar Medina, Hamar Medina, people say, yeah, it's Aloha Lamaisa. If you can't have wine, have other drink, which is important in that country. Well, whiskey is out of touch when it comes to Pesach. Yeah, but even natural juice, which is Hamar Medina, some people say, I was in a shir by a Rav who quoted Rav Yashiv even, and he said to be to have like very important, nice quality orange juice, maybe it's a dollar choices. Don't try it at home, but I remember that clearly the guy saying it because you have to like what you drink. You have to have something as important as one that you like. Because if it's something that you hate, you don't feel like a Ben Choirin. And that's what it says here in the Gemara, especially Ein Chai, which nobody really likes. Now comes another aloha. Shton Bevas Achas. Oh, what does Shton Bevas Achas mean? Oh. What did I tell you before? Shton with basachas means what is basachas? One, two, three, four. Right after kiddush, boom, boom, boom. One, two, three, four. You know, like yeah, done. And the rest? <laughs> no, he's a Russian. He can manage. <laughs> he's a Russian. He can have four cups of strong wine and be absolutely sober till two o'clock in the morning. Was he yoitze? First of all, before we discuss yoitze, not yoitze. <laughs> in case he's not out, it's not shikar. 
That's the explanation of the Rashbam in Toysis. Rashi says something even more unbelievable. Rashi says, you took, look at that. You took four cups and you filled them into one big cup. And you drank one big cup. <laughs> Get it? In other words, you took one, two, three, four into one big cup. You know, like the American cups of Coke, right? Like you have, yeah, like in the burger places. The very big cup you have. You drank, yeah, 7-Eleven, where I don't know, I'm not so much into, not proficient in American hedonism. The kids are, it's here. I know it's all here. The kids are, you have one, two, three, four into a very big cup, you know, like that. And you drank it all in one go, you know, like a shaker, like that. All four said, Shmuel, you're a yoitze. Unbelievable. Well, how is that called the cloud four cups, right? The Rishonim go crazy with Rashi because Shmuel said that if you drank the vas achas, you're yoitze. If you say one, two, three, four, although you're not really doing it the right way, but the mice, you drank four cups. But according to Rashi, you really drink one big cup. How can you say you don't say anything? Unbelievable. That's a big question on Rashi. What? But it's not called very nice with the brochas. Nice. Another another issue. Good. Good what you said. Says, uh, yeah, you know, you can't tell the used to be cops. It's one kois. There has to be a kois here. Let, let me, says, says the, says the primigodim. Says the primigodim I saw yesterday. Listen, unbelievable. Says the primigodim. Listen to the going show primigodim. How about if I take one big cup, yeah? I don't have koyach to start refilling and another guy is to refill for me. I'm saying like this. I'm not stupid. I'm drinking from one big long cup, which I filled to its maximum capacity for reviews, four times 170 this, and I drink it by the order, but from one cup. Ah, I get it? In other words, I'm drinking one course of Kiddush. I drink a quarter. I meyeke. I measure it. At the end of a godo, from the very same big cup, I drink another quarter. At the end of Birka Samoza, ah, am I yoitze there? Says the prima godim, that's Rashi. Rashi never meant to say you drink from one big cup, everything gulping and that guzzling down. No. Rashi said, you, the Rishon, in the other Rishon, was in Toys, was saying you drank them all four cups in one go. One, two, three, four, right? And he says, no, it's one cup which I divided into four different drinkings from the same cup, different times of the Seder. According to Rashi, that's a question here. And according to Rashi, according to Shmuel Yoyotze, because Lamai say you have a cup, which you drank from four different times, one minute, there was Shmuel. However, Rav Omar, uh-oh, no, no, no. Yede yain yotzo. The simchas yain, the simchas yom tov of drinking good wine, your yoyotze. Yede abakoises lo yotzo, full stop. But the Dalit Koises, you're not Yotze. Ellen, you were right, and Yosef, you're right. A person who drinks one, two, three, four in one go is not Yotze Dalit Koises. He's Yotze Simchav Yain. He likes wine. He can't wait. He needs it all in one go. Nice. Mitzvah Simchas Yain. Mitzvah Yomtev Biyain. But the mitzvah of Dalit Koises, you're not Mikhaim. The Koises have to be four separate cups in the right order during the Seder. Otherwise, you're not Yotze Dalit Koises. Thank you very much. We continue tomorrow, Emir Hashem, till more or less the end of the page. And then, yeah, see me at home scrubbing the floors. Okay, for Wednesday, Thursday, we're off, Emir Hashem. Thank you very much. at Rabba. And have a great day. Thank you to everybody here. Abba Shalom. YouTube and mainly Torah anytime. Thank you very much. Matanus Lev is still here. Even though...